Okay, today's project is on this Subaru Forester. This is a 2002. Um, I've had maybe for about a year. It's got 150,000 miles on it. Um, I did put a rebuilt engine in it, um, but recently it started making kind of a growling noise coming from the back. I thought it was tires. I started noticing it right about the time I did a tire rotation. Um, but it needed tires anyway, and I finally got around to putting new tires on it, and it didn't help the growling at all. So I got online and poked around, and it turns out these cars seem to have a common failure in the rear wheel bearings. So I got those ordered, and we're going to give that a try and see if that helps the problem. So let's get this into the shop and get started on it. Okay, um, so I've watched a couple of YouTube videos on other people doing this, and uh, there's a couple of different methods. So I'm not exactly sure where I'm at on this one, but um, I think the best thing to do is going to be take off this big hub nut here, and, uh, and then just see if we can pull the hub out with a puller at that point. It's good. This part's got to come off anyway, at some point. Okay, the next step, I think, is 
try to pull this hub off. So I've got this puller, never used one of these before, but we're gonna see what happens here. Well, this isn't going to work. <clears throat> this is just pushing out the drive axle. Okay, so uh, I think what this particular job here calls for is a slide hammer, which I don't have. So I'm going to improvise a slide hammer with some garbage I found in the barn here. And we'll see how successful this is shortly. Well, the hammer seems working okay, but it sure doesn't want to come off. Well, bang on it some more. Well, folks, there's no going back now. Okay, I just wanted to kind of compare this old hub with the new ones that I ordered. So here's the new one, made in China. Uh, it's got four bolts here. Yeah, looks pretty good. So I'll need to change this ring over and have a look at this grease seal that's not going to come off very easy and I guess I don't need it off but I do need to make sure I know which seal goes where Off so I can look at it.
Maybe I should take this ring off before I break that prying on it. Okay, this one is well, don't see any markings on it, but I could match it up. Looks like that one. That's the first one. And here we are up underneath looking from the back of the hub here and the next step is to disconnect something that then allows this to swing out so that we can pull the bearing in and out. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do that based on my YouTube research. Uh, one is to take out this long bolt that actually goes all the way through here and out that side but it is apparently notoriously difficult to get out and seeing people end up having to cut it and then hammer out the pieces and then put in a new bolt which I'd rather not do. I saw another video where a guy um, instead of that bolt disconnected it back here said it was a lot easier just disconnected this bolt and this one um, so that's an option also, however these are uh, cambered for alignment purposes and there's a, there's a little wheel that says a, with a, some writing on the back and I'm not sure, it's got a, it says lock on it, so something's going on with that too which I don't fully understand so I'm kind of not sure I want to take that apart, uh, not knowing exactly how it works. but. If I can't get this bolt here off, that's going to be my option. So I guess I'll give this one a try, see how that goes. And if that doesn't work, then we'll be up here at these.
Yeah, that ain't coming off. Okay, well, fresh off of that frustrating experience, um, we're going to try plan B here. I just couldn't quite get this, get the bolt out of this, this bushing on this side. It seemed like it was, I was able to work it a little bit with the pry bar, but it never really made any progress. It seemed like it was, but it, it never did go. So I worked at it for a long time. It was pretty frustrating, um, but we're going to have to give that up. And, uh, and go over here to these bolts. So um, I think the first thing I'll do is mark these. So this one at least actually kind of has some marks. Uh, well, let's do this. gizmo here. Uh, what it does, I'm not sure. Let's see. It says turn it this way to the lock. So how about me? Feels like maybe it's just a cover. Just a nut under there. Um, I guess that's just a cover for it. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll see if we can take these off.
Okay, I think we're going to have to do a hybrid version here. I don't know why this bolt is so hard to get out. The nut on the back is actually looks pristine because it was under this cover. It's not corroded or anything, but it will not budge. And I can't really get a long extension on it because really all I can get is a box end to wrench because it's so close to this tank that I can't get a socket on it. So this one's off, which is connected over here to the bushing I couldn't get out. This one is on, but I might be able to push the, the long bolt far enough out of that side to get it off. So let's try that. All right, that was about 50 times harder than I expected it to be. But let's carry on with the part that I actually expected to be difficult and see how this goes. So I believe that the snap ring is supposed to be here. Yeah. All right, so there's a snap ring here that comes out and then we'll get the bearing out. And by the way, the more I'm working on this, the more I'm starting to think these bearings might be a, just been fine. And I'm doing this for nothing, but too late now. is now now this whole bearing is supposed to be able to get pushed out from the back so I uh, got a set of tools for that that I've never used give it a try all right just got this set mail today from Amazon. I was waiting on this for this job. Uh, so it's going to take me a little bit to figure out how this works, but this can be used hopefully to pull these bearings out. I think that first I need to look in the back here and see if there's a, a uh, 
grease seal. It's probably a grease seal that can be popped out. And got too many tools out here. Okay. So here's the back. I'm guessing. Maybe I should try to push the bearing first and then pop these out from the other side. It could be easier. So I gotta find a, one of my little things that fits right down in here on the bearing past the grease seals. Let's see if I got one. Otherwise, I'll have to pull the seals out. This is the smallest one. It almost fits, but not really quite. Uh, so I'm going to have to try to get those seals out. Maybe I can do it from here. There's one. That's the outer one. Actually, I think the other one maybe have gone in from this side. Oh yeah, okay, I think that fits on there now, so. out. I'm not sure I did that right. might have forced this grease seal through the wrong way, but whatever. There it is. She's out. Looks pretty fine. Balls are all in there. It's got grease. I don't know. They may discover it's the differential that's the problem. That would figure. Yeah. This other seal was supposed to go out the other way. Whoops. Let's see here. You can 
can see it in there, what's left of it. But it's on the other side of this ridge, so I just forced it. Okay, here's the new bearing. Um, see how I can screw this up. Uh, okay, it doesn't appear to have a you know, front and a back. It's got a little, whoop, little chamfer on both sides. So I think that and we'll just put it in, see what happens. this. Take that out. And I can just push on this. Next part is the new snap ring and this outer seal. Well, no snap ring. Okay. Snap ring. Grease seals in the back. Grease seals in the back? Sure. Now, here's the grease seal. I guess this should seat in here, probably.
Maybe I shouldn't have put those grease seals in the back. I see on there. Leave that hand tight for now while I try to reassemble the rest of this garbage. Uh, so I just got to put back the, the strut and that thing and the long bolt. So I'll save you having to watch that too. You know what? I changed my mind. You're going to watch this. Alright, that's torqued down. <coughs> that's the long bolt. Reconnect this little strut here. easier than it came apart I'll tell you that okay this one will be a little bit tricky I remember how it went so there's this and also uh, where is it? Oh, this piece fell out somewhere while I was banging on it I guess this goes on the back Somehow, I got my little mark there, barely left remaining. Good enough, though. Is that how that went? No. No, 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 no. Heavens, no. Is it? Hmm. Okay. There. Piece of cake. <laughs> Alright, the book says 137 foot-pounds 
on this nut. So let's see here. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. That sure is hard to turn. Why is that so hard to turn? tighter than 137 foot-pounds ain't right. Look at this with me. Rear drive axle nut, Forester 2002 and earlier, 137. Hey everybody, I took this thing out for a test drive last night and it was making a pretty awful grinding noise from this back wheel that I worked on, so that was not encouraging. Um, so I parked it and slept on it and thought about it, and this morning I took it all apart again and had another look at it, and um, one of the things I discovered was that the seals that I had been popping in and out were 
pretty much dry of grease because I kept wiping them off every time I'd put them in. Uh, so I greased those up and that seemed to help quite a bit actually. And another thing that I noticed was that I had put a little bend in the brake backing plate probably from when I was trying to pry off that long bolt. Um, and that was rubbing on the brake drum and was making that noise. So I straightened that out, put it all back together, gave it another test drive, seemed totally fine, no noise. The growling that I had been originally hearing is gone. Um, so I think I'm gonna call this one fixed for now. If uh, something does crop up in the next couple weeks, with it, I'll uh, let you guys know, but I think this was a success after all.